Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to lesson 15. We're already at lesson 15, believe it or not. Today we'll get started by looking at an application problem. So I'll go ahead and give you a moment to read here what's on the screen. Go ahead and write down in your notebook this title, application problem, at the top of the page. And then also write down any information that you think you will need in order to solve this problem. All right, so again, pause this video so that you have a moment to solve the problem. All right. So something I like to say is uh, something, several things I like to say with my class. One is box the question. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that here in front of you. The question, how many people went through the gate that day? Okay, so box the question, circle the numbers. The numbers are important. Hopefully you wrote those down in your notebook. And then underline important information. When Six Flags opens, the number on the counter at the gate read this number. At the end of the day, the counter read this number. How many people went through the gate that day? Okay, so I'm gonna underline end of the day. And then when Six Flags open, so really here I'm looking at a time problem. At the beginning of the day, it was this much. At the end of the day, it was this much. So I know that a day has passed and now I need to figure out how many people went through the gate that day. So I'm going to draw a tape diagram to help me understand this question. We will be practicing tape diagrams for subtraction today. So the total amount is this 931,682. So we're gonna go ahead and make that the total value on our tape diagram. Then most of that, so it's getting a really large piece, 928,614, and we're looking for the other piece. A tape diagram for subtraction always has the total, which is this number, and then it has pieces. In this case, it will have two pieces, and we're trying to find the missing piece. Go ahead over on the side and line up your place values, getting ready to subtract. Take a moment to subtract. We'll talk about your answer in just a moment. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and subtract. First, I need to borrow so that I'm able to subtract 12 minus four. That will equal eight. Seven minus one is six. Six minus six is zero. One minus eight can't do it. So the one goes to the three and says, hey, can I borrow? And the three says, sure. So the three becomes two and the one becomes an 11. 11 minus eight is three. 2 minus 2 is 0, and 9 minus 9 is 0. I've noticed that some of you include these zeros, but they actually don't make sense. They don't write a number with zeros at the front. So, 3,068. All right, so now I need to be sure that I'm writing a complete sentence answer. This goes for our application problem. This also goes on, your, uh, on any of your work that you're doing in your notebook or on Kami as well as your exit ticket, you need to write your answer in a complete sentence. So 3,068 people went through the gate that day. All right. Please be sure you have these notes. I will be asking that students submit photos of their notes so that I'm able to see uh, your progress. I'm able to see your process in learning. Feel free to pause this video if you still need more time to write. In the meantime, I'm going to our notes for today. Please write the title at the top, subtract with zeros. Please also write the date depending on when I show you this video, 
it might be a different date. All right, in order to prepare my page, I'm gonna go ahead and make three columns. Okay, I made that, those columns go all the way down my page. And then I'm going to draw one line across so that I have space for titles. The first one will be horizontal problem. The next one will be tape diagram. And the final vertical problem. Please have those three columns prepared in your notes. All right, here we go. We'll be doing three problems together during our note taking time. So please write this problem horizontally. 253,421 minus, actually, I think I need more room. So I'm gonna move down and move over. So 253,421 minus 75,832. Notice on your exit ticket, some of you are actually trying to solve it horizontally. What happens is that because the place values are not lined up vertically, it's actually really hard to subtract this way. Okay, so we're writing it horizontally and now we're going to go make a tape diagram. So which one of those two numbers will be the total? The first number or the second number? It will be the first number that is the total. So here we have 253,421, that's the total. Then we're gonna have two pieces. So this piece, I'm gonna write down below because I don't think it, my, my handwriting, it will fit inside. And then the other one, I'm going to put a question mark. We're trying to find the piece and the question mark shows the piece that we're trying to find, okay? Now we're ready for the vertical problem. So go ahead and line that on up according to your place values. And go ahead and subtract. All right, we'll take a moment to, I'll be subtracting now. So I cannot do one minus two, so I'm coming over to the two, saying, hey, can I borrow? And the two says, sure. So the two becomes one, and now one will become 11. 11 minus two equals nine. One minus three, I can't do it. So the one goes to the four and says, hey, can I borrow? And the four says, sure. So the four becomes a three. I feel like I have okay, something itchy. All right, so the four becomes a three and then the one is going to become an 11. 11 minus three equals eight. Three minus eight, I can't do it. You seeing a trend here? <laughs> Every time we have to borrow. So the three goes to the three and says, hey, can I borrow? The three says, sure. So the three becomes a two and now three becomes 13. Whew, this is a lot of borrowing. 13 minus eight equals Five. I'm gonna go ahead and write my comma in, just keeping them all lined up. Two minus five, I can't do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and borrow. 12 minus five equals seven. Four minus seven, can't do it. So I borrow. Now I have 14 minus seven, which is seven. And then I have one, there it is. So 177,589. That then is the missing piece that will go here. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a squiggly line across to prepare my space down below for number two. 
All right. Now is where we really start to look at this goal, subtracting with zeros. Okay, number one was kind of the warm up to get us thinking in this subtraction direction. And now we're taking a look at a problem with zeros. So here we have 1000 minus 528. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a tape diagram. Which one of these numbers is the total? 1000 is the total, that's the bigger number, okay? And then it's gonna have two pieces. One is 528, the other one is a question mark. That is the number we're trying to figure out. So please go ahead. And line those up vertically. Now zero minus eight, I can't do that right away. So the zero is gonna go ask the zero. The zero says, sorry, I don't have anything to share. So the zero goes and asks the next zero and that zero says, sorry, I don't have anything to share. So the zero goes all the way to the one and the one says, sure. Now here's how this works though. The one can't just pass the one all the way down here. It's not gonna work, okay? because that would mean that this 1,000 is gonna become a 10. 1,000 does not equal 10, so it's not gonna work. So I cross this off because the one is going to become a zero. I go to the next zero and I'm gonna turn that into a 10, okay? Now I still need to pass one along, so this 10 is going to become nine. And the zero becomes 10. And I still need to pass one more on, so this 10 becomes a nine. And then at the very end, I'll have a 10. Whew. If you need to watch that again, feel free to uh, back this video on up. You know, move that little uh, button at the top, at the, on the time, you know what I mean. Move the little button on the time so that you can rewatch that again. So here we have 10 minus eight equals two. 9 minus 2 equals 7. 9 minus 5 equals 4. That's it. The hardest part is at the beginning. When you're looking at all those zeros, and you're like, what do I do? It's okay. You'll figure it out. We're doing this together. Then I might also check my answer. 528 plus 472. They should add up to be 1,000. 8 plus 2 equals 0. Well, not 0. It equals 10. So my zero goes down below and my one goes up above. One plus two plus seven is again 10. So D zero goes down below, one goes up above. One plus five plus four equals 10. So it does equal a thousand. Preparing my third space here for our final problem today. Turning my teacher book so that I can see. Now we're going to look at 1 million minus 345,528. Okay, if you're going to try to solve it this way, I would encourage you take that extra moment to write it vertically. It doesn't take much time and you are much more likely to have the correct answer, okay? This is the way vertically to write it when you're trying to get all these numbers in the right place. So here we have our tape diagram. The total number would be 1 million. And now we've got two pieces. I'm gonna write this down below because I don't think I'd have enough room up there. So I have two pieces. I know one piece and I'm trying to figure out the other piece. All right, just like when we did a thousand, we got all these zeros. Si se puede, all right? Zero minus eight, it's not gonna work. So zero goes all the way down the line to the first one that could share and that's the one million. So the one becomes a zero. This next zero becomes a 10. And it's like they're just gonna keep passing that one all the way down, so 10 becomes a nine. Zero becomes a 10. 10 becomes a nine. Passes that on, passes the one over. 
10 becomes a 9. <laughs> Passes the 1 over, so it becomes a 10. The 10 again becomes a 9. Passes 1 over. I still need to pass it one more time, so this 10 also will become a 9. And that final 0 is now a 10. It will not be 9 because it doesn't have to pass a 1 on. So that final 0 is a 10. Okay, 10 minus 8 equals 2. 9 minus 2 equals 7. 9 minus 5, 4. 9 minus 5, 4. 9 minus 4, 5. And 9 minus 3, 6. I can go ahead and check my answer. And I should have 1 million after I add those numbers back up. All right. Um, we will for just a moment. This is the end of our note taking time. But there's one more thing I'd like to show you. So if you could please, we'll switch over to your workbook. We're going to open up to lesson 15 problem set. So that's page 82. Please join me there. We're going to do one of these problems together. I've noticed on exit tickets that students are able to solve the problem, but they're not able to draw a tape diagram. So I just like to help you with that by practicing one time. Here we go. Again, we're on page 82. Please pause this video if you need time to get there. Before we read the problem, please go ahead and box the question. Please circle the numbers. Please underline important information. So now is the time when you read it very carefully. I always like to begin by reading the question. If the plane has 7,793 miles left to travel, how far has it already traveled? So do you hear that? These are our two pieces, right? A plane is going from here to here. They have this many miles left to travel and it's asking how many has it already traveled, okay? So we're listening for where are the pieces and where is the total number? So David is flying from Hong Kong to Buenos Aires. The total flight distance is 11,472 miles. If the plane has 7,793 miles left to travel, how far has it already traveled? I'm gonna go ahead and draw a tape diagram that helps us understand the problem. So the total, did you notice that word total? So the total on my tape diagram is also going to be 11,472. And I'm gonna have two pieces. One piece says they still have 7,793 miles left to go. And it's asking me how far has it already traveled? So that's it, that's your tape diagram. You know the total and now you have two pieces. Let's go ahead and solve. I'm right away lining this up vertically because it's gonna help me be able to solve. Okay, go ahead, take a moment to solve. We'll check our answer in just a moment. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All right, and the final step is to write a complete sentence. So the plane has already traveled 3,679 miles. 
There it is. All right, an example of a word problem. This is again, how you should do it on your exit ticket, how you should be doing it on your problem set or your homework, okay? Because we, we, don't, we don't just wanna, it's kind of like reading. We don't just wanna understand the words in reading, we wanna think more about the story. It's the same thing here in math. We don't just wanna understand the numbers, we want to be able to think what situation do these numbers apply to? Okay, so here with this situation, it's how far is this plane traveling? All right, thank you for participating with me today in lesson 15. Until next time.